Coach Jimmy Patsa celebrating 100 years of Maryland basketball. You were, as we see the video highlights play up there, you were in a lot of those highlights on the bench. Tell us what the feeling is when you finally get to the mountaintop. You know, working for Gary from the beginning, you got to remember, I was there with Walt Williams all the way through DJ Strawberry. Uh, in other words, to, to see what Gary Williams and his staff and Billy and the whole school did, thanks to Walt Williams staying, to build all the way up, to then get to the Steve Francis era, then to get to Minneapolis, then you weren't sure. It's hard to get to the Final Four. Then to go to Atlanta and just have one. And by the way, it wasn't just Atlanta. The run to Atlanta, you know, Kentucky. I just saw uh, Karan Butler. Karan Butler said the best college game he ever played in and one of the best basketball games ever was Connecticut versus Maryland to go to the Final Four. So it was really an incredible run, but Coach Williams deserves all the credit. And to beat all those good teams, but to get out of, you know, Syracuse, and then Steve just... Blake hit some big shots, but Juan would never let us lose. You know, Juan was just tremendous. Out of all of that, you say Walt Williams. It's probably a turning point that kept Maryland relevant. But past then, was it bringing in Steve Francis and being the highlight show on ESPN, or was it, what turned it? Players, you know, but what Keith Booth did by, by telling everyone in Maryland it was okay to go to Maryland again was huge. But Walt to Keith to Joe Smith, Steve Francis, and then, of course, the whole crew of Blake, Juan, Dixon, Byron Mouton transferring to Wilcox and what Lonnie Baxter meant to this program, just becoming a two-time regional MVP. I think only him and Christian Leitner are the only guys to ever become two-time regional MVPs. It was Christian Leitner and Lonnie Baxter. You know, it was just an, it was an amazing thing. And then I, then I got to stay here and watch a new group take over that led to, you know, the ACC championship. I was here. So was Don Marcus with me. Uh, but that was sort of my, my run was Walt Williams all the way through with DJ Strawberry. But Juan Dixon's ability to just not let us lose was unbelievable. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Uh, Juan's much calmer than I think Gary and myself were when he coached different era now, but I'm waiting. It's year two for Juan. Then I'll go in and have lunch with him and say these a couple things I like and some things I don't, but it's, it's a, Juan's a great basketball mind. It's, he's just in a really tough situation because they have to play a lot of money games not to get into the situation he's in, but it's all about the conference. But Juan's going to be a very good coach, really good offensive coach, and I did go to one of his games this year. Hi, Don. Hey, Jamie. How are you? Hi, so, buddy. What's going on? You all right? I'm good. Can you guys Every talk? Penn State's good. Penn State uh, what is about going again. to Cameron and going to Carolina that, that makes it so great, and can you have that in the Big Ten? Working on it. I haven't been to Michigan myself, but I've been to a lot of the arenas. Wisconsin's a really tough environment. Um, Illinois, I've played there before when it's full. Cameron, Cameron and, and, and Dean Dome, that's the ACC. That, that's the past, and that was a great thing, and that's a lot of what tonight's about. But the future of the Big Ten's really strong, and I got the Terps going to the Final Four this year. I think Big Ten's toughened them up, and when they get in uh, NCAA play, having the big guys and the experience is really going to help them. Thanks, Coach, for being on. Go Terps.